for myself, my topic is off a little bit from wood research. And after retirement, I have a lot of time, so I try to study a little bit about global warming. And uh, since the meeting is setting up, so I would contribute the topic of uh, forests and the climate, and the mitigation of uh, forests to change the climate. Uh, so what I, I'm no expert in this field. What I'm going to do is share uh, the data that I gathered. Uh, so. I will separate uh, my talk into three parts. First one is concerns. The major, con uh, major concern is global warming, of course, environment, climate changes. And the second topic that we're going to cover, to cover is force. Past, present, deforestation, reforestation, afforestation, uh, and the risks of force. And the third one is benefit of force and mainly is uh, climate mitigation. And all this, you know, global warming, you know, where the forestry deforest, deforestation, all came from the, pop, uh, the pressure of population. And Dr. Peter Bass has mentioned it, you know, that, that's the pressure we're coming from. So uh, this year, last year, population is, 7.5 billion uh, population. So it's a magic number. So the pressure is higher, higher. You know, global warming is becoming more, more possible. <laughs> so population is our source of a problem. And another concern is the global warming, and that's the, uh, the hockey stick. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, the red part is the actual recording from thermometer. And the blue line is the, uh, again, Dr. Peter Bass has mentioned, we, we, we estimate that from proxies. And one of the most important proxy is with uh, growth rates. <laughs> not even, you know, the fit, not even the, the solid wood, but also from the fossilized uh, tree ring analysis. And I believe uh, among us, Dr. Quillen is the expert on it, right? The fossil, fossilized uh, tree ring uh, width. So, but that's global warming. But unfortunately, this, this chart has only covered about 1,000 years. And if we extend it a little bit to the Rome, Roman Alp, Empire, you see now present we are worrying about the highest temperature that globe have recorded, but actually in the past in the Roman age, it has the same about the same temperature height, and in the medieval, and also there's a dip in the temperature, and that's called Little Ice Age, so it's not a perfect stick, <laughs> but later on we will talk about. Uh, look at that a record uh, in hundreds of millions of years, okay? So this is the concentration of carbon dioxide in the in atmosphere, in North Hemisphere. And this is a spot measure. It's measured from the mountain top in the Hawaii. <laughs> okay, only one spot, okay? And that Hawaii area is what? A volcanic area, so it spills up no gases. Maybe how accurate this measurement is, we don't know. But uh, with our technology, we can measure carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, you know, from satellite. I think it would be more reliable. But anyway, that's another topic. And now we talk about force uh, in the world's present. Uh, that's the data that I got from is FAO, you know, 2012. The forest coverage is about 30% of the globe surface, and which is 40 million uh, square kilometers. And that's how much forest we have now. And that's, you know, uh, that's the forest coverage, that's the picture. 
And now we have three major uh, forests covered on the globe. One is tropical, which is about 11.7% of the coverage of the earth. And the boreal is 10% and temperate is 8%. And uh, the, uh, the actual uh, uh, area is uh, also written there. That's what I'm called the data gathering, so share with you. <laughs> and deforestation. And uh, you see the temperate, temperate forest uh, was deforested in the last, say, 500 years because of, uh, well, human expansion, for example, North America, in New, new America, uh, the New World, and that's related to uh, the, the uh, uh, human pressure, you know, we need to clear the land for agriculture, uh, things like that, but, you know, that is probably minor uh, comparing to deforestation of the rainforest, tropical. And nowadays, tropical deforestation is slow but still going on and uh, a little bit we'll talk about that a little bit more. So and we have lost uh, since five thousand years ago until to, to, to present day, we have lost about fifteen percent of the forest. Uh, from about forty five, some figures has fifty percent of coverage now to about thirty percent. Okay, uh, cumulative deforestation since uh, pre-industrial uh, ages. Tropical forest is about, you know, 1.06 million square meters, uh, kilometers. And temperate forest is less than that, okay? So that's, that's, uh, and deforestation due to agriculture expansion and urban development. Development, you know, if you like China, they're building uh, the 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 high high speed train, and it takes a lot of land, uh, uh, so and the highways, things like that. Uh, so that's major reason for deforestation. Deforestation. It has been estimated that deforestation contributes to about eighteen percent to twenty percent of carbon dioxide emission. Of the into the atmosphere, atmosphere. So obviously, we've got to stop deforestation and reforestation and afforestation. And deforestation, uh, especially in the tropical area, we 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 talked about since. Uh, uh, Deforestation of tropical uh, uh, temperate forest is uh, has stopped, it literally stopped. But we're talking about now the uh, tropical rainforest. You know, from 1990 to 2000, you know, 16,000 square kilometers for uh, forest disappeared. Uh, but it is slowed to the last decade. That's a uh, 13,000. So it's a good, good, good sign, but still, still going on, yeah. So it's been slowed. Reforestation achievements from uh, 1990 to 2015. The most in, impressive one is uh, China, uh, going from 16.7% to 22.2% of land coverage, okay. Uh, and the program is called Grand for Green. The problem of Chinese reforestation is monoculture. In the north and central China, the most trees planted is hybrid poplar. So monoculture is the problem. In the south is eucalyptus. So that's the problem. And, and very little, I. As far as I know, very little native or indigenous species be planted in a large scale. So, uh, so that's problem with China. Spain, Spain is a surprise, big, big increase, 
And of course, those are probably many plantations, right? Victoria? <laughs> plantations. And Vietnam, Vietnam was deforested, very much deforested uh, during the war years in the 70s, you know, because they spread uh, Agent Orange, <laughs> killed the vegetation in a large scale. Uh, so Vietnam also, again, uh, based the uh, reforestation by plantation. It's, those are a few examples, a few examples. Afforestation, two projects are going on right now. One of the two projects called Green Wall Projects are going on. Uh, the main purpose of this afforestation is to stop the desert. So one is going on in China. I do have some pictures, but I will worry about time, so I didn't show the picture, but it's online, you know. Google, you can, you can see the pictures, the presentation. But again, you know, I want to mention it again, moral culture is the problem for this one, because again, they are doing hyper problem. <laughs> so that is a big problem too. And the other Green War uh, project is going in, in, the, in, the, in Africa. And they are planning to build a wall of nine miles, you know, wide, and 4,000 miles across the middle of Africa to make a great wall to stop the Sahara from going south. So this one, the, the, the one in Africa starts at 2005 and in Senegal around, along 27,000 hectares has been planted with acacia. And yesterday we talk, we had a talk about acacia in, in, in Africa. So the risk risks of uh, forests under the influence of climate changes. Yeah, and this this is important. Uh, drought and heat, and drought and heat, and uh, I don't know if you can see. You have a buy spot on the map. For example, in western United States that you have several blind spots, you know, the, the white spots. Those are the actual study site. They have proven that the drought and heat uh, causes the death of forests, the death of the trees. Because we all know about the last 10 years, West has been dry, you know. And uh, last year, uh, Southern California is limited. You cannot water your plant <laughs> lawn, right? So. So a lot of trees been dead. And that not only happened in western United States, but also in the central north, north central. Because uh, two years, three years ago, I took students uh, in the upper peninsula, uh, Michigan. We saw a lot of hardwoods, uh, limited to hardwoods, of the dead you know, because of drought. So around the world, uh, you, you see some, some 50 cases, they actually study the science. So drought and heat is a problem, and that's directly related to climate. And fire and diseases, and uh, bark beetles, bark beetles. And it seems, you know, Steve and probably the expert, you know, about every 30 years, you have a cycle of uh, uh, bark beetles uh, problem. The last cycle, well, about five years ago, we had the second cycle since I've been in the United States. The first one was in early 80s. And Southern Pines has, has the same thing. So is that weather related? I think, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, we, we heard this morning about Michelle's, you know, they, they tried to salvage the beetle kill the wood for making, making things, you know, and Dr. Koch had a, uh, uh, Peter Koch had a book, you know, uh, about beetle kill, uh, utilization of uh, beetle kill pines. But anyway, benefits of forests, and besides cultural, Social, economical, and ecological benefits, which are not the theme of this uh, meeting, and uh, the most important 
benefits of forest is removal of carbon dioxide from atmosphere. And okay, and that's a longer uh, record for temperature and carbon dioxide concentration on the globe. And you can see you have two circles, and the first from going from the left to the right, the first red side circle is the time that the juniper, juniper, uh, I'm not juniper, I mean, uh, uh, conifers evolved. And it, we don't know what the event caused the temperature did, but you can see when the tree is coming up, evolved, and the carbon dioxide concentration just suddenly dropped. And that's the best, I think, evidence of photosynthesis removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And the second, second red circle uh, marked the event we don't know yet. You know, nobody knows what happened to the temperature dip. Uh, but, and that is in the period that some dinosaurs died off, becomes extinct. And also, after, you know, after that, you know, it's the evolution of uh, angiosperms. So you can see from after that, the carbon dioxide just continu continuously decreased, decreased, until about uh, one million years ago, the carbon dioxide concentration becomes level and below, usually before 300 ppm, until uh, uh, industrial revolution, that carbon dioxide concentration begins to rise. Yeah. But uh, in, this, in this chart, overall, the globe has a decrease in temperature also has very low carbon dioxide level. So that's make people suspicious uh, whether carbon dioxide is really a contributing uh, uh, greenhouse gas or not, we don't know. And another worry is methane, it's probably more dangerous than we thought, yeah. So, but anyway, uh, that's, that's the picture, uh, how forest can do. It just reduced the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Okay, but anyway, uh, carbon sequestration is another big function of forests, and I will not read the numbers, but it's a huge numbers that trees can store the carbon. Right. Okay, and uh, so. The biggest one is what? The tropical forests and temperate and boreal. Yeah. So that's the second function of forests. You can store, tie up a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, carbon dioxide. Mitigate uh, climates. Forest ecosystems remove about 2.6 billion tons of man-made carbon dioxide annual, annually, <laughs> including emissions from fossil fuel burning and slush burning and decomposition of uh, tropical deforestation. So that's a huge number. And also forests, especially tropical rainforests, uh, ev ev evaporation and transpiration from the forest. Uh, the steam goes up, forms cloud, and clouds share the sunlight, reduce the surface temperature. So that's another contribution. And also rain, rain cools down the surface temperature. So that's another big function of forests. Uh, all right, effect of forest can be enhanced through the order, this order, two others. Say, reforestation, that we can stop that, you know, uh, and enhance the benefit of forest by reforestation. 
increased carbon density of the existing forest. Increasing carbon density means the health of the forest. Well, you probably have a, an even aged forest construction, and the young forests, of course, young trees are more vibrant than older ones, of course. So it's maintaining the vibrance of the uh, forest. And use more for forest products. We all know what is good, right? And including use the preservation to uh, prolong the surface life of wood, just fix that carbon in there. And lastly, but not the least important one, is reduce deforestation and forest degradation. So those are what we should do. Yeah. So those are, you know, that's that I will conclude by these two points. Rapid population growth increase, increase of deforestation through agricultural expansion and urban development, resulting in increased carbon dioxide emissions. And second, deforestation must be minimized and afforestation must be implemented to reverse the global warming trend. So that's my conclusion. <laughs>